In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about how Jesus is the cornerstone, how Jesus is the only cornerstone to build our life upon so that we have a strong foundation. And Jesus is the precious cornerstone to, towards those who believe and is a stumbling block to those who reject him. The key verse that we're going to be learning today is 1 Peter 2.6. For it stands in scripture, behold, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. We're going to be uh, having a time of prayer first, and then we're going to be singing our songs. Blessed be the name on Christ the solid rock and sandy land. Okay, so let's start out by praying to the rock. Lord Jesus, you are the rock in which our lives can be built and, and truly be ha having a strong foundation so that we will not be disappointed. We will not be put to shame if we put our, our whole lives completely on your your cornerstone on built on you because you are the only sure foundation in all of life that we can trust that we can uh, build our lives upon lord i pray for each one of us that we would not reject jesus that we would not um choose other things to follow after but that we would find that you are the only choice stone that you are precious Lord, um, we thank you for your word and what we're going to learn today, and I pray that you would open our hearts and help us to see your truth. In your name, Jesus, amen. Okay, we are going to start out by singing. There, we're going to sing three songs. Uh, we'll start out with our theme song for our uh, study. Uh, we have been going in our uh, children's lessons. We've been learning about the names of God. And uh, if you want to see other videos on these uh, studies, you can go to Community Bible Church uh, Anaheim on our YouTube channel and look and see for the children's lessons. You can also go to my YouTube channel, Heidi Bashore, and look under the videos that I have uploaded as well. And so um, we have been learning about the names of God and it's been a wonderful study. So our theme song for this is Blessed Be the Name. And it goes like this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the that we would bless you and praise you. The next song we're going to be doing is a, a hymn that was written in the 1830s. The words were written in 1834 by Edward Moat, and the um, uh, music was written in 1863 by William Bradbury, and it's public domain. So this is an awesome old hymn, and it's On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Christ the solid rock. 
that be your prayer too. All right, the last song we're gonna do is a pretty fun one, and this one reminds me of when I was a kid, and it's by Salty, um, called Sandy Land. Kind of funky and maybe a little um, bluesy. So we're going to do it again. Don't build your house on the sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. Well, it might look kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice. So you have to build your house once more. Now we're going to do the chorus. You got to build your house upon the rock. Make a good foundation on a solid spot. Well, the storms may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. The chorus. We'll do it one more time. Um, you gotta build your house upon the rock. Make a good foundation on a solid spot. Well, the storms may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. All right, now we're gonna do the whole thing. Don't build your house on the sand. favorite song from that album. I listened to it so many times. All right. Well, um, we are going to get into our study and let's um, start out by uh, doing the Bible verse that we had here. First Peter 2 verse 6. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, and chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So that's a wonderful, wonderful verse, and uh, we're going to be using that as our theme verse for this whole lesson. And I'm going to be quoting uh, from 1 Peter chapter 2. If you could get out your Bibles and go to that uh, first Peter chapter two. And if you have a hard time finding it, look in the New Testament towards the end. There's a whole bunch of small books. And after James, you see first Peter. So it goes Hebrews, James, and they have first and second Peter. And then you have first, second, third John, Jude, and Revelation. So, and those little, those books are pretty small. First Peter is only five chapters. So go to first Peter chapter two. And I'm going to uh, try to quote from you, uh, for you, recite um, verses 4 uh, through 8. Okay, here we go. Um, and coming to him as to a living stone, rejected by man, but choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices to acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. This precious value then is for you who believe, but to those who disbelieve, the stone became a, let's see where it's, those who disbelieved um, the stone which the builds rejected, this became the 
cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And to this doom, they were also appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a priesthood, a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So this, this section talks about how Jesus is the cornerstone, but that there are those who reject this cornerstone and their lives will eventually crumble, unfortunately. And so we need to see that it is through Jesus that we have to build our lives upon and that when we're all being built and fitted together in Christ's body, that in, in his building, he has to be the center of our um, of our building. He has to be the main stone, the precious cornerstone. Um, and if you, uh, if you have ever seen any ancient buildings and you looked up, um, and studied cornerstones, the cornerstone was often a field stone, a super strong stone that they found somewhere else, different than the ones of the regular part of the building. And they put it in the corner on um, as the main strong structure for which the rest of the building would be built upon and that would be the strongest part of the whole building and the weight of um, all the rest of the stones would would kind of lean into that cornerstone and that is how our lives need to be um, I am today not in my normal uh, outfit that I usually, or my normal church going outfit. I am in one of my running outfits. And I used to do a lot of running and I've run a few marathons, which is 26.2 miles and I love it. I call it running with God because I actually memorize scripture while I run. Um, and it helps me think about the Lord and the things of the Lord while I'm running. Um, so uh, anyway, um, I still like to run. I just don't run as long. Um, so one of the reasons why I'm in this running outfit is because this, uh, we can learn about Jesus being the cornerstone by thinking about um, running and running a marathon. Now, um, I have a water bottle. That's very important when you're running a marathon. Um, and it's also a really good idea to have a hat to kind of whisk away some of the perspiration that you might have. Um, and then there, it's important to know which way the uh, course is going. Um, and when I've, when I've run in different races, there's usually a clearly marked out trail and I would study it beforehand, but then um, there would be lots of signs saying this way, go this way. and. Um, in order to actually finish the race and not be disqualified, you would have to go the course um, that was set for you. You can't officially run if you go off the course. Um, so um, we are learning about how, um, a, how in a race, there is a special direction that needs to be gone, needs to be taken. Um, and sometimes um, there are wonderful things to encounter while you're running, like water. And some people are there cheering you on and they are handing you goo food, which is like this gooey kind of almost like really good for you uh, yogurt or, or really good for you pudding <laughs> that has lots of good nutrients in there. Um, and those are really wonderful detours that happen. Um, but sometimes there are things you don't expect that might happen. Um, and maybe there is some obstacle in front of your path. Um, or maybe there's a sign that says detour, you know, and it's like, what? What is that? Where do I go? And it might be really tempting to kind of to kind of go the shorter route that you might see and go over the barrier um, or cut a corner on on the sidewalk where you like, I know the path is going this way, but it's faster to go over that sidewalk. Um, and so sometimes the detours, you're, you're tempted to, to jump and go past them um, and not go on the proper path. Um, and, but if you go on those paths, you'll find out at the end of your race that you're disqualified 
um, and that you're not able um, to actually get the medal or the prize. Um, um, but, you know, if you can imagine being on a race and there's this sign that tells you where everywhere is telling you where to go and then there's a detour sign um, and you see that this is detour, but you could actually it's much faster you could go that way. Um, would you be the one to go on the path or would you do the detour? Would you say, oh, I'm gonna, would, would you like say, I'm gonna keep on the path that looks faster or would you take the detour route that you need to go to finish the race? Well, um, sometimes the barriers are put there for a reason. And in our life, we have lots of different barriers that might occur. Um, this year probably has seemed like a little bit of a barrier or a big barrier to a lot of us. And yet God has put it in our path. Um, and um, if you can imagine in this, um, in this story of a runner who, say it's me, going through and seeing the detour, um, if I choose to go on the path that has been blocked with a barrier or barricade, um, I might be in great danger. Um, and, um, and what if I went on that path and all of a sudden it was, it wound up being a dangerous, dangerous path and I might, it might be killed. So the barrier might seem unnecessary because I think, oh, I can go this way, but then I don't know what's at the end of it. And, um, God has put different barriers in our lives. Uh, for a reason. But Jesus is meant to be the cornerstone of our life. He is meant to be the barrier that we embrace, the precious barrier, the precious stone, and not one that we stumble over um, and try to and try to um, go past, but the one that we stop and we say, yes, you are the barrier that I need. You are actually the precious stone. You're not a block in my way. Um, so, um, some people, Jesus seems like an unnecessary barrier. To others, he is a life saver. And so in this verse, it shows that he is a precious cornerstone and he who believes in him will not be put to shame or will not be disappointed. Um, so, in this life, we need to see Jesus as um, a lifesaver, not as a barrier, not to stumble over, okay? Um, so, to some, Jesus is a precious cornerstone, and to others, he's a rock that made them stumble and fall. Um, the, we need to focus on the fact that Jesus is absolutely necessary that in order for our building to stand. Um, so in Bible times, the building was built, like I said, to lean itself against that main cornerstone and the more stress on the, on the actual building would, uh, it, all that stress would be on the corner there. And because that stone was super strong, the rest of the building would have a, have a, uh, stronger, um, uh, stronger, stable foundation and a stable structure. It would help them to, to stand up. So, um, now if, if we had a, a stone that was soft and crumbly, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be what we'd want to build our lives on. But Jesus is a strong and precious and super stable cornerstone for our lives to be built on. Um, people who reject Jesus are like this. They are like um, they built their life on something crumbly, on something that is falling apart. I don't know if you've ever seen sand, sandstone. Um, sandstone is, is a rock, is a stone that just erodes and you can sometimes see it on the side of, of um, cliffs near uh, oceans. And it looks like it's been carved out by the water and it's super super um, soft and you can just take it in your hand and go like this and it crumbles 
and sandstone is really beautiful, but it's not strong. It's not what you'd want to build your lives on. And sometimes you might look at someone who's a non-believer who seems like they're doing great. And, and yet, their lives are crumbling away. So, um, Psalm 73, 1 through 5 says, Truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the, uh, of the arrogant. And when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for they have no pains until death, their bodies are fat and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. Sometimes it may seem like someone who is without Jesus is doing well. But God tells us that their lives will fall down. They will crumble. And it might even seem like some, some people without Christ ha have good lives and they're happy. Um, and, and we might even kind of be tempted to envy them. But the Lord says, I know their end, and it is not good. And if, and especially in this year, I think we've seen lots of difficult things that have happened, and we've seen it. People are, are scared because they don't have the rock. They don't have the solid foundation for their lives to be built on. And I want you to know that Jesus is the only foundation for our lives to be built on. And I'm praying that we all that you all will trust in Jesus as your Savior that who can take away your sins and that you can build your life upon and, and grow and rejoice and not be scared and not be jealous because um, God is, is the one who fulfills you. So is Jesus chosen? Is he precious to you? Is he the one you've built your life upon? Is he the one that you say, I have Jesus. For this, I have Jesus. For this difficulty, I have Jesus. Or have you stumbled upon Jesus and just tried to jump over him as a barrier? It's like, ah, I don't want Jesus. I'm rejecting him. There's only two options. Either you follow Jesus and you make him your foundation in your life, or you try to throw him out of the way. Are you trusting Jesus to be a strong, stable rock for your life so that you will not feel anxious or afraid? You can have peace in the midst of the storm because God is your foundation. Are you envious of evildoers? You don't need to envy those whose lives are crumbling eventually. So we have a little, um, we have a little uh, application page for us to do. And um, I'm gonna try to attach this in our emails for church. Um, but if you can see, there's a side that says believers and there's a side that says unbelievers. And this says, on each of the blocks below, write a value, moral, or principle that is often being built into each person's life. Add more blocks if you need to. So for unbelievers, the stumbling, the one that is crumbling, um, Dependence is on self. You can say self-image or um, self-esteem. That's all about how we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. How about materialism? Oh, if only I had this item, I'll be okay. Or this in my um, toy chest or bank account. <laughs> or how about greed? Like, if only I had this. I mean, materialism is about things. Greed can be about things or money or anything that we want to accumulate. Pride. How about I'm better than that person, so I'm okay. Or I'm not as bad as that person, so I'm okay. 
Or how about temporary happiness? I'll be happy when this happens or if this happens. And yet those things can crumble. And this year we've seen so many things crumble. I mean, not even being able to celebrate Thanksgiving with our families, not or being concerned that we wind up hurting each other. So we put masks on all the time and it's been hard, right? And so happiness doesn't come from our circumstances, true lasting happiness, temporary, there things can be. Or what if like, if I only do this bad thing, it'll make me happy right now. That's okay, right? If I steal that cookie or cheat on that test. So for believers, Jesus is the cornerstone. And you see, this is a very strong structure. Our dependence is not on ourself. Our dependence is on God because we know that we are weak. We're not strong in all circumstances. God is the strength. So our dependence is on the solid rock, on God, not on ourself. Honesty. Honesty is super important. We don't have to lie because we don't need to make ourselves look good because we need Jesus to make us good. Faith. Our faith is a strong, strong corner, a strong stone because it's built on Jesus. It's built on our faith in who God is and Jesus's payment for our sin. Trust. We can trust God because he's proven to be trustworthy. He made us and we know his word and we know him. We can be humble because we don't need to feel big <laughs> because we know God is big and he loves us and he cares for us and joy. We can have joy because, because our, um, our circumstances don't change how we feel. Our, our joy doesn't change. Sure, we might be disappointed, but we can still have joy because nothing can take away the most important things, um, which is all these things. Faith. Faith and Jesus. If we have Jesus, we're okay. So, I pray that this lesson will, has been a blessing to you and that you would see that Jesus is the only foundation for our lives to be built upon and that you will um, have joy in the midst of anything. God bless.